shark jump? I see a bird with a lemonade color on its head. A lemonade color? Yeah, that does look like lemonade. <laughs> What's up everybody, Blue Game. We're back home, we're in Stewart, Florida. I've got Andy here from North Dakota. We met him at the meet and greet at Crystal River Plantation last weekend. We got little Luke, we got Jake up front. Y'all recognize that boat right there? If you watch my stand up paddleboard fishing, my snook fishing video, right there off the tip. Look at this pretty little bird. Right off the bow of that boat's where I caught that nice keeper snook. But the wind's blowing 20. We're headed mackerel fishing. We've got about a six mile run. Hopefully it's got enough, the wind's got enough west to it that we can still fish. Luke, are you ready to catch something? Yeah. Jake? Yeah, I'm ready. Adam? Let's do it. Adam's from North Dakota. He's like, yeah, man, I'd like to go catch a mackerel. So we're going mackerel fishing. Y'all stay tuned. Dad. You think you want to go fast. Do what? Let's go fast when we get Why out. do you always want to go fast? Because I like that. We got about a six mile run. Gonna go just out the mouth of Stewart Inlet to the right into an area called Pex Lake. That's where all the mackerel come to spawn. Hopefully this 20 mile an hour wind's got enough west in it that we can still fish. He's got one. All right, y'all, we're out here fishing. It's super crazy rough. Jake's got one on. Andy's already caught a giant jumbo, and we're doing what we can do to bring y'all a show because I want some smoked mackerel dip. What you got? I mackerel. A mackerel? Like a holy mackerel? Yeah. Dang, he's big. Keep that rod bent. That's all you got to do. Keep that rod bent. Bring him right over here and get him right in his net. Keep him coming, keep him coming. All right, now just stay right where you're at. Got him! Woo. Woo. I don't know what it is about Florida anymore, but if it ain't blowing 20, it's not blowing at all. Unfortunately for me, I haven't seen it not blow at all in like a month. But we're catching fish. We're hooked up. We hooked up. Crazy sharp, catching them on the little Yozuris. You gotta get your own fish out though. So these mackerel come into this area called Pex Lake to spawn during the winter time. There's literally thousands and thousands of them. All these boats around us you see are commercial mackerel fishing. They're taking glass minnows and they're slinging them off the back and they're taking spoons and they're really not casting but 20 feet. Just pop, pop, bam, and they hammered it. They're catching 14, 1800 pounds a day. All right, Andy's hooked up again. How do you like those rods? They're awesome. My favorite, favorite rod. Got him. Thank you, sir. Oh, that is a big mac. Set it down the ground. That's, a, that's almost a jumbo. I'm not 100% sure how we're going to cook them. My buddies up in Maryland said they eat them raw. I'm thinking smoke mackerel dip, but we got plenty of fish to cook. I'm gonna try to show you all a little bit more footage of catching them. And then me and the boys are going to the sandbar to catch some cool critters for the fish tank.
think that shark is? Oh. That's why I didn't want to get in and find lobster field. This is one of our best lobster spots right here. That's what you call a jumbo mackerel. Y'all can see we're only in 14, 15 foot of water. These fish are all right here mid column. All these fish lay about five, six foot off the bottom and they just go back and forth feeding and spawning. I wish I could show you underwater footage but there's a lot of sharks out here today and the water's not that clear. So y'all ain't getting it. I ain't doing it for the YouTube. Y'all see those teeth? That's what just cost me $40 in Lewis. See the sharks? We're gonna catch a couple more. <laughs> Grab me those pliers. What a stupid rookie move. Is that deep? Yeah, it's deep. Oh no. see a rookie move that hook is all the way in as deep as it can go now we got to figure out how to get this macro off of here Jake come back here and get these pliers I don't know if I how to do this right now but I'll find out so how are we gonna do this set the camera down and get the turn well as y'all can see Today just got a lot more interesting, and it is hung all the way into here. I ain't quite sure how I'm going to get that out, but I don't think pulling it out is an option right now. We're going to try to get this hook off this lure and head in. We'll see y'all back at the dock. So luckily, this hook is old and rusty. <laughs> Woo. That sounded so wrong. <laughs> Y'all, that was no joke. I gotta go get some antibiotics because that hook was nasty. That was all I could do to not pass out. All right, y'all, we're back at the house. Got all these nice mackerel. Now we're gonna do some different things with this. Andy's from North Dakota. His family, his in-laws are here. They have a winter house. I'm gonna send some fresh mackerel home with him to cook tomorrow. We're gonna cook some tonight. So when you're cleaning the mackerel, their backbone and their bones are a lot more fragile than like a mutton snapper. So you can't just go cutting through it, pressing real hard, or you'll cut right through the bones. Peel it up just like that. Get on that backbone. Come through just like that. Now look at that meat. A lot of people think mackerel's not a really good eating fish. They're absolutely crazy. It's good smoked. If it's fresh, it's good fried, grilled, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, mackerel is really, really good fish. Period. Come in here. 
take that little bit of a, see how easy I cut off those bones? No biggie, just come in here and cut it out. Look how pretty that meat is. I'm gonna put some olive oil on this side, a little bit of salt and pepper, maybe some garlic salt, and lay that on the grill just like that, and cook it over like a salad. So one thing cool about these Danko knives, they're not very expensive, and if you go to dankopliers.com and use promo code and use promo code Blue Gabe, you'll save another 10%. It's already free shipping, lifetime warranty. If you break this knife at any point, they'll give you another one brand new. Watch out. That's how hard that was. Ready to go. All I gotta do is take a little bit of these gut rib bones out. All right, so all we're gonna do is take a little bit of olive oil. These copper screens, Robert first started using them and then I had a fan send them to me and they're pretty neat. Just rub that olive oil like that. Take a little bit of the canned cooker butter garlic. Y'all haven't seen that in a while. It's about like that. A little bit of Old Bay, because I'm going to make a sauce to go on top of this. It's going to be so good. Now that looks like a lot of seasoning, but you got to remember it's only on one side. Let's go put it on this grill. So I got the Traeger at 305 degrees. It shouldn't take but about 20 minutes. We'll see y'all in a few. All right, so in this little bowl, I've got about two tablespoons of cream butter. I'm going to double that with honey. About that much. Stir it up. Now when I first started Blue Gabe YouTube, I started with one of these. I just killed it the other day. So I had to break down and go get another one. About a tablespoon of garlic. And some of these pickled jalapenos that I've cut up in little chunks. And just sit there and stir that up. Look at that. You know that's going to be good with that honey and the butter and the garlic and the jalapenos. Now I'm going to let that fish cook for about 15 minutes. And for the last five minutes, I'm going to go out there and spoon this on there. It's, I can tell y'all it's going to be so good. Y'all, look at that sauce. Just, just look at that. But wait. Look at that. This and just put it right on the top. Uh, if y'all can only smell that. Hannah, if you were here, you'd be proud. Andy makes a heck of a cameraman. Give it maybe five more minutes and we'll be done and ready to eat. Y'all, look at that. That honey's gotten all brown and caramelized. I don't even know if I want to eat it. It's too pretty. All right, well, you've seen us go fishing. You've seen us clean these fish and cook them, but we're still not done. I'm going to let Andy eat some of this mackerel for y'all to tell y'all how good it is. Then we're going out to Robert's Ranch to meet up with deer meat, let Andy try to shoot a hog. And then we're going to come back, smoke this fish, and show you all how to make smoked fish dip. So this might be one of those long ones. I don't know what to tell you. Just keep watching. And if you haven't subscribed, hit subscribe because we got a bunch more cool videos coming. All right, dig in. Let us see. Let us see. Let's give it a shot. Look how white that meat is, though. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, I would say you outdid yourself, but this is something you do every day. It's pretty dang good. I knew it was gonna be good. Let me try it. So a lot of people don't think of Spanish mackerel as being like a really high targeted fish to eat. Most people would only make smoked fish dip out of them. When, you're, when they're fresh and you take care of them. It's unreal. <laughs> I bet that wasn't the only bite you're gonna have. No.
This one won't be the last either. <laughs> I should have probably cooked more. <laughs> Man. Just fresh, not too fishy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now we'll see y'all out at the ranch. We're probably gonna bust a cap in a few hogs. We don't know. Booyah. But then we're coming back here to put the fish on the smoker, let it cook pretty much eight or nine hours. We're gonna let it brine overnight, then smoke it for four or five hours. Then show y'all how to make my fish dip. This ain't no crazy fancy. It's just gonna be good, clean, fresh. Probably the best you'll ever have. And I'm, that's my story and I'm sticking with it. We'll see y'all in a bit. We're in hot pursuit. We're slipping up here to one of the feeders that Robert has. There's typically always a hog here, so. Hopefully Andy gets his first wild boar. Florida style, baby. We got him barefoot. We got deer under the feeder and big open crane, so we're just trying to be patient. There's a doe under the feeder. She keeps standing up on her hind legs and knocking corn out of the feeder. I've never seen that before. But unfortunately, there's no hogs. We're not deer hunting, we're hog hunting. The mosquitoes are so bad, it's insane. It's time to go to the truck. Oh, man. All right, so now that I got all these flays done, they still have the bones down the middle, but that'll all come out. I want to brine these because I'm making smoked fish dip. So I'm going to take a bunch of honey. This is wild raw honey harvested right here by my house. Actually, you know what? We'll just do it like this. About that much. I'm gonna take some of this kosher salt. Come on, faster than that. About that much. Now this is a part that I don't know, but I love jalapenos. I almost won't eat fish dip if it doesn't have jalapenos in it. So I'm gonna just dump a bunch of that in there. Then I'm gonna take this bucket of ice, dump that in there. Now I know this ain't bottled water, but this is good water. I'm gonna put about that much of that in there. I'm gonna close the lid, because one thing about these coolers, they are one, 100% airtight. Now I'm gonna stir all this up. Do the hokey pokey. I'm gonna let that sit for 24 hours. All right, so we went out to the ranch last night, saw some cool hooping cranes, saw white-tailed deer, saw raccoons, got Andy out there barefooted. He's from North Dakota. He's like, wait, what, take my shoes off? But he was like a natural. Took the fish out of the brine this morning, got it all laid in here. Got the big pieces on the bottom, middle, medium on the middle, small on the top. Gonna close the lid, let it cook for about two and a half hours, and we'll see y'all when it's done. Y'all, look at that. We smoked a whole mess of mackerel. So I got this little food processor right here. I'm just gonna peel it apart and try not to get any of that dark meat right there because that's a bloodline. That'll make it a little bit fishier than you'd want. Break it apart. All right, so I'm only gonna make a little batch. I got the kids, they went off camping with their mom last night when we got done fishing. Now if I'm making a real big batch, obviously I'm gonna use a lot bigger of a blender. Take it like that. All right, so once you got it in there, a little bit of Crystal's hot sauce, pretty good chunk of garlic. 
Not that much mayonnaise. All right, once you get it minced up, some people like it real chunky. I'm not a real big fan of that. Just about like that. Then I take my onions and my pickled jalapeno. And just a little bit of the juice. And I stir that up. The cool thing about this dip is once you get it done, especially when you make as much as I did, you can vacuum seal it and save it for a party or a Christmas party or anything you want to save it for. I don't like to blend the onions up just because I like the crunch of the onions and the jalapenos. If you put it all in there, it would just be a soupy mess. So the last thing I'm going to do is take some of the canned cooker creole. I don't have very much left. Just sprinkle it on top. Take some of these little flatbread crisps. They're flat out good. Mm. But can y'all smell it? Mm, mm, mm. You can tell it's fresh. All right, go ahead. Let's see what you think. Don't worry, Redneck will get those droppings. Is it good? <laughs> Redneck, was it good? Y'all want to come over here and check out Frank? Frank, say hi. All right, y'all, that's a wrap. We're done. We're finished. I hope y'all like that. I know it was a bunch. Sharks got bad. My finger's okay. Doesn't even hurt, to be honest with you. It hurt like heck when I pulled it out, though. Jake and Luke are tired. It's Saturday night. we got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subbing. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and hit it for me. Share me with your friends. But like Jake always says, where are you at, Jake? Right here. Come over here. What do you have to say? We getting the heck out of shape.